Tom, how are you? Good, Jerry. Yeah, yeah, pretty excited. Royal Ascot day one today. So, I'll take, okay, this has you have to. Uh, there's a lot of jargon around, uh, particularly Royal Ascot and flat racing. Yeah, why is Royal Ascot important? Uh, Royal Ascot is kind of like the Cheltenham of flat racing. It's it's a it's a it's a five day meeting with just non stop global Group One action. Um, Aidan O'Brien obviously dominates. He has the best access to the best horses on the planet generally. So he's like nine time champion trainer there. Um, but like today, you've got so three Group Ones on the card. You start off with the Queen Anne. That's where Frankel sort of kicked off his four year old career back in the day. Uh, you've got the best five furlong sprint in the Northern Hemisphere run this year in the shape of the King's Stand, that's at 3.40. Um, best two-year-old race of the year so far in the Coventry Stakes, followed by sort of the rematch for all the milers coming up later at 4.20 in the St. James's Palace. So it's just pretty much the best horses coming together over the course of a week at Ascot. And it's got all the, you know, the ceremony and the pomp and the top hats and the royal parade and all that jazz as yeah, well. Yeah, so that, that, so Cheltenham has its own rhythm that everybody kind of gets familiar with where a certain day is associated with a, a certain couple of races yeah, and it yeah, builds absolutely. towards the end of the week with the Gold Cup. Is it something similar with...? There are similar. So there's like, there's like peak races in each day. So like the big race is the Gold Cup, which is, you know, was famously won by Yates three times. That's on Thursday. And that's an historic race, uh, uniquely for a flat race over two and a half miles. Right, so, so that, it's a long that's race. completely different for, from what you normally have. Uh, but like there, there are key races every day. Friday, we've got the Carnation Stakes uh, and the Commonwealth Cup. That's for fillies over a mile and six furlong three-year-olds. Um, then on Saturday, you've got the other major sprinters over six furlongs, the Diamond Jubilee. But the, it's just the quality in every single race pretty much okay look it's it's a longer festival now so it is slightly more diluted than Fair it enough, used to yeah, be that's yeah. inevitable um but it's just a phenomenal standard of racing generally across the, and across the board. Is Ascot a fair track? Does the best horse always win? Is that one of the reasons why this is it's a, a pretty festival? fair track, yeah. It's right handed stiff finish, good sweeping bend, long there's a there's a five furlong straight track, there's a six furlong straight track, there's a straight mile which is quite rare. Right. So you have the likes of the Royal Hunt Cup, which is just a cavalry charge, thirty right. runners straight up the front. Uh, by the way, in the Royal Hunt Cup, um, settle for Bay for David Mernan's looking to go back to back in that. He's around fourteen to one. He ran a really eye catching race uh, on return at Leopardstown last time out. I'm writing this down. Should I be? Is settle for Bay. Yeah, he's fourteen to one for is the Royal this, Hunt. Is Cup. this one of Tom's tips? Uh, I, I don't know. We, we look through things, but. Um, yeah, I mean, as regards betting value, I, <laughs> it's very difficult to tip up a Royal Ascot because, uh, you know, everything's trying for its life. So it's, um, you know, in horse racing, sometimes it's quite easy to just draw a line through six or seven or eight horses in a race and you yeah. can narrow it down quite quickly. But uh, it's much easier to sort of make cases for, for horses in races like this. Okay, so tell us about um, what you're most looking forward to this week. Uh, well, I'm most looking forward to today, the King's Stand. Um, there's a horse called Batash, who is favoured here. Um, it's the second one of the season. He is undoubtedly the quickest sprinter in training but um, as with any sports person that makes him unique he's an absolute fruit loop so he might play up in the stalls and he might completely blow his chance at the start so as a betting proposition he's quite difficult but as an exciting spectacle and as a horse he is phenomenal um, he had a wind up over the course of the uh, off season, which basically generally means that they're able to process the wind quicker. When you think about the size of a horse, the size of its chest compared to the size of its nose, that's yeah. obviously uh, quite a significant thing that it's able to breathe. But uh, Batash is a very exciting horse. He's up against Blue Point, who won the race last year. Mabs Cross, who's a dual Group 1 winning sprinter. Equilateral, who's a stablemate of the favourite. Uh, Serge Abrakofi, I've trained by Aidan O'Brien, so going to become the first... Um, three-year-old Colt to win this race over five furlongs since Equiano a few years ago. Every race, like I say, I could talk about it like this because there's such strength in depth, but this King Stand is really exciting. Um, the first race today, the Queen Anne, by the way, is a horse coming back here called Barney Roy. Um, it's not the greatest race depth-wise, but um, he's just an intriguing runner. Um, he, he won on this day two years ago when he was a three-year-old, uh, then was retired off to stud. That didn't work out. Right. Wouldn't be featured on the dad cast. Right. He's since had the cruelest cut of all. He is back. And uh, yeah, he, he's back. He's running about a six to one shot That's in the first unfair, race of the it? day. It's like it doesn't work, so we're going to lop it off? Yeah. I mean, come on, just let him, just let him keep it. I mean, if it's no good, it doesn't matter. No, no? he's, yeah so, uh, yeah, so poor old Barney Roy. He's, he's, a, couple of, oh. he's a couple of stones lighter, um, uh, but... <laughs> Is that what it's like? 
that one right. of the reasons it makes you go faster? Is it? <laughs> uh, well, it helps, helps the mind concentrate as the thinking, you know. Okay, okay. It's distracted. Okay. What odds are, is Barney Roy today? Barney Roy's 6 to 1 in the first right. in the Queen Anne. Um, as regards a bet in the Coventry, as uh, a horse called Royal Lytham, he's about 20 to 1 for Aidan O'Brien. Um, although I do like Threat, who's in roundabout favour. But again, with these things, like it's sort of easy to sit there and go, oh, Threat will win, he's around about 5 to 2. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, have, I have a couple of prices. Do you want, do you want yes. 320 to 1 shots? Oh, right? yeah. Please. 320 Please. to 1 shots. So We've been taking um, uh, horse gambling advice from Kevin Cabana over the last while, and he hasn't had a winner since he last played for Ireland. <laughs> okay. So it's been okay. a while. Okay. All right, three horses at 20 to 1. So back these each way. Roy Latham in the Coventry at 3.05, for Aidan O'Brien, coped by Glen Eagles, who's really eye-catching on uh, his only run so far. Um, again, the Coventry, they're all very, very lightly raced juveniles. This fellow's by Glen Eagles, who is actually a Royal Ascot winner himself. Uh, Equilateral, again, he's actually a stable mate of Batash. He is not the most straightforward horse in the world, but accordingly, he's 22 to 1 uh, in the King's Stand, so he might make the frame in that. And... Um, Later on is a horse called Fox Champion in St. James's Palace Stakes um, in, in the 420s, about 22 to 1. He's won his last four races on the bounce. I actually like Too Darn Hot in that race, who's had a, um, who's had a, a weird preparation. Um, he was champion two-year-old last year, but look, he's coming up. And a, a shout as well to Willie Mullins, who could win the last race. You know, you expect Willie Mullins at Cheltenham dominating, but he's a horse called Riven Light in the Wolferton Stakes at 5.35. And actually, Willie Mullins has an excellent record at Royal Ascot as well, uh, as, you would, as, you, as you would expect, be one of the best trainers uh, ever to saddle one up. A man of many talents, uh, as are you, Tom. Thanks very much for uh, hopefully picking some winners for us and helping us to get our hands around exactly why uh, Royal Ascot matters so much.